Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. The fruit of our lips is to praise you, God, for you and you alone are worthy. All adoration, all honor, all glory, and all praise. Oh God, it belongs to you. And I bless your holy name. I come with a thankful heart, with a grateful heart. Praises on my lips and thanksgiving in my heart. Oh God, you're worthy, you're great, you're mighty, you're awesome. You are God and God alone. Father, and as I stand this morning, before these, your precious people. Lord, I stand as a yielded vessel that you might work your will in and through me. Have your way. Use me, Lord, that I will be your mouthpiece this morning, that you will speak through me to our hearts. And as your word go forth, it's burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Lives will be changed, souls will be saved. Hallelujah. Your people will be delivered and set free. Lord, we put a demand upon the anointing. We have a spirit of anticipation, a spirit of expectancy. And we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do through your word. We ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, come on and give God a good shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I want you to lift your Bibles and repeat after me. You know what? Let us do this together on the count of three. Those of you that talk fast or read fast, slow down. The ones that slow, speed up a little bit. And we're going to do this together. Amen. One, two, three. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is the better after hearing the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Give God a shout of praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. I want you to open your Bibles and turn to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 18. It says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Subject of our lesson today is give thanks. As Paul closes his first letter to the church at Thessalonica, he stirs them with a series of brief exaltation. First, he tells them to rejoice evermore. Then he says, pray without ceasing. And then in that 18th verse, Paul says to them, he says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. No matter what the circumstances might be, be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. So this morning, before I get into the message, I just want to give thanks for a minute myself. Lord, I thank you that you woke me up this morning. Lord, I thank you that when I got up, I was closed in my right mind and everything in my home and everything with my family was, was well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for Jesus that paid the ultimate price that I could have this right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a great family, not just a good family, God, but a great family that you bless me with, for my friends that you bless me with. Lord, I thank you for Love of Christ Worship Center, 
These precious people that you've allowed me to be the under shepherd over. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful this morning. I could go on and on and on about the things to thank God for. But now I want to look and see what Paul is saying to us this morning as he's telling us that we are to be thankful in everything. Give thanks. I see three things that I want to talk about in this one verse that we're going to lock in on, and that's verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Number one, a command to give thanks. Number two, the context. And number three, the concern. Three things we're going to deal with. The command, the context, and the concern. First of all, it says, give thanks in everything. This is a, div a divine exhortation. This is a decree to give thanks. Throughout the book of Psalms, we've been instructed to give thanks. Psalms 30 and 12 says, O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Then if you look at Psalms 92, verse 1, it says, it is good thing, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And if you keep going through the Psalms, Psalms 105, verse 1 says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 106, verse 1 says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Then if you look at Psalms 107 and 1, it's, it's in, uh, instructing us or encouraging us again to give thanks. It says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. His love endureth forever. We have so many reasons to give thanks to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Psalms are instructing us to give thanks. The Psalms make it clear that of all people, Christians ought to be thankful. Of all people, Christians ought to be thankful. Word of God also tells us it is evil not to thank God. Romans 1.21, it says, because they were, because that they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful. In other words, they were not grateful for what God had done for them. They did not recognize God as Lord and Savior or as God. They acted as if they were their own source or own sufficiency. There was absolutely nothing. There is absolutely nothing you do that does not depend upon God. Scripture says God is the source of all good things. That's a reason to give thanks. And God doesn't want you to forget it. I'm reminded of the children of Israel. God led them out of bondage down in Egypt, brought them through the Red Sea into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, everything is dried up and parched. There's no water. There's nothing there. But God fed them every day with manna from on high. He took care of them. And after a while, they started grumbling. They started complaining. They forgot about the blessings of the Lord. They forgot about what God was, had already done for them and what God was continuing to do for them. So they started complaining. You know, we're tired of, uh, of eating manna from heaven. We want some quail. Just think about this. They was experiencing a miracle every day of their life because God was raining down manna from on high and feeding them. But were they grateful? Were they thankful? No, they were complaining. We're tired of this. We want some quail to eat. And I was saying to myself, you know, those ungrateful jokers, how could they do that? How could they complain? Well, oh, God. 
had done and was still doing for them. They are experiencing a miracle every day, but they are missing it because they are complaining. Hmm. But you know what? Can't be so quick to point a finger. Likewise, we forget to be thankful about the blessings that God has and continuously bestow upon us. Instead of saying, the husband saying about his good things about his wife, he might, he might say, I don't like her cooking. She can't really cook. I don't like the way she fix her food. Well, he could switch that around and he can be thankful and say, Lord, you have given me a loving wife. Lord, you have given me a wife that's a good mother. She keeps the house in order and she takes good care of me. Instead of being thankful, switch the script. Turn it around. Same thing with that the wife would do about the husband. You know what? He'd get up every day and change his socks and leave these stinky, nasty, dirty, smelly socks in the floor. A lot of men do that. <laughs> they do. They, they, they just pull them off and throw them down, you know. So the wife is saying, I am tired of this. He can pick up his own socks. He don't need me to pick up behind him. But you can look at the other side of it and you can say, Lord, you have given me a husband that love you, that love me. Thank you, Lord. And yes, love him first and love me. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've given me a husband that's a great provider. He's a great father to the children and he love us. Lord, I thank you. What am I saying in that? That we all sometimes can get into the mold of grumbling and lose sight of what we already have instead of being thankful. And it's the same thing with the children in the house. I don't want to clean up today. They're always telling me to clean up my room, always telling me to clean the house and wash the dishes and, and, and uh, take out the garbage if it's a young, if it's a uh, son. Always wanting me to do this. I'm getting tired of doing all this work around the house. How about this? Lord, thank you that you have given me loving, caring, sharing parents. Thank you. I have food to eat every day. I have clothes to wear and I have shoes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I don't know how the bills get paid in the house, Lord, and I'm not even concerned about how they get it paid. Thank you that my parents is taking care of all of this. This is what I'm talking about. When I'm saying, let's, instead of grumbling and complaining about the blessings that God has already bestowed upon us and constantly do, let's have a thankful heart. Let's be grateful and thank God for what he has already done and what he continues to do. Paul is encouraging us today. He said, in everything, give thanks. You see, there's a divine command to give thanks. A thankful heart is giving thanks in everything. I'm not saying that you give thanks for everything. That's not what it's saying, which takes me to my second point. The second point is the content of giving thanks in everything. Don't miss this. God does not say give thanks for everything. God is saying, give thanks in everything. And that's a huge difference. Content. I'm sick. God is not saying, thank me because you're sick. You're not thankful because you're sick. I don't have any money. God is not saying, thank me because you're broke. Because that's not God's will for your life. Your house burned down. God is not saying, thank me, thank you, Lord. My house burned down. That would be thanking God for everything. And that's not what he's telling us to do. You know, I went to the doctor and the doctor said I had cancer. God is not saying, thank you, Lord. Don't tell me thank you because you have cancer because that's not God's will for your life. God is saying, even though you're going through the challenges, even though you have cancer. Thank God, Lord, you are my healer. Thank you, Lord, you sent Jesus, hallelujah, that I could walk in divine health. That's what we are talking about when we say thank him in everything, 
and not for everything. Here's what I'm saying. Turn with me to Habakkuk, the third chapter, verse 17 through 18. Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, Although the fig trees shall not bloom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the laborers of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Habakkuk is saying the produce is not coming up like I want it to. My profit margin is not where it should be. There's no fruit on the vine, and I'm a farmer. That's a bad season. And to add insult to injury, my olives fail. Olives was used for everything in Jerusalem. He said, there's no profit. The bank want to foreclose on the house. No cattle in the stall. And cattle is a big part of my income. This is a bad year. In fact, I believe that it's the worst year that I have ever experienced since I've been a farmer. He said, yet, glory, hallelujah, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's a thankful heart. That's giving thanks to God in everything. I'm not thanking God because my situation has fallen apart, but I'm thanking God because God, you are the God that can turn this situation around. I'm not thanking you, God, because I don't have any money in the, in the bank. I'm thanking you, God, in the midst of my trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. Because you are my source. You are the all-sufficient one. I'm thanking you, and I can say thank you today because no good thing with you will hold from me. That's what it's talking about when it said give thanks in everything. Oh, we have a reason to be thankful today. I don't care what the challenges might be in your life today. You have a reason to be thankful. You can be like the psalmist. You can say, when I look back over and think about what God has already done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's what we are talking about, a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving, because God has done so much Try counting his blessings one by one. You couldn't do it. You couldn't count them. They're so numerous. That's what we're talking about when we said the content of giving thanks in everything. Not because I'm in a storm. It's storming all around me. One storm after another is raging in my life. God, I'm going to praise you. Lord, I thank you because I'm not in the boat by myself. You're in the boat with me. I'm not in the storm by myself. You're in the storm with me. Thank you, Lord, with a grateful heart, with a thankful heart. That's what it's talking about. Whatever the situation might be in, God, I know you're the God that can fix it. Whatever it is, nothing is too hard for you. So I can say thank you in the midst of glory be to God. Thank you, God, in everything. That's a heart of faith because that means that I know that my God is bigger than the difficulties and the situations that's coming against me. And I'm going to give glory to my God right in the midst of. See, when you're in faith, it's not that you wait until you're delivered out of the situation. You don't need faith for that. But you need faith when you're right in the middle and you see no way out and you're depending and counting and leaning and trusting and looking to Almighty God and the promises that He has made to you in the Word. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God is going to deliver me out of them all. That's what we are talking about. Right in the midst of it, when you see no way out, right in the midst of it, when it seems as if God is not listening to you and He's not answering your prayers, that you lift your hands and say, Lord, I give thanks. Hallelujah. That's what we are talking about today. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas was in prison. Did nothing wrong. 
teaching and preaching the word of God, beaten and put in prison for the gospel's sake. And the word of God tells us that while they were in prisons, they were in chains, not only the prison doors locked, but they're in chains. And in the midst of that, with their backs hurting and possibly bleeding from being beaten up, it said they were singing songs and praising God. Hallelujah. How can you sing songs and praise God when your back is beat up and you're in prison and you've done nothing wrong? That's faith in action. That's trust in God. That's saying regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what I'm going through, thank you, Lord, because you are in control. You see, there's power in giving thanks. There's power in saying, thank you, Lord, because the word of God said at midnight. Hallelujah. At midnight. You know, it's something about midnight. Midnight is the darkest hour there is, but there's something else about midnight. Midnight is just before dawn. Glory be to God. See, right after midnight, it begins to dawn. The sun comes up, changes take place, and you can see things. It said at midnight. That was an earthquake. A thank you heart. God see you, and God's going to move. I can just imagine as they were singing songs and giving praises and God is looking down and saying, look at my children. And all he had to do was just clap his feet. That could create an earthquake. Thank you, Lord. I'm in prison. I don't deserve to be here. Thank you, Lord. I'm trusting you, God. If you don't deliver me out of the situation, you're in it with me. Hallelujah. And there was an earthquake. And the chains fell off. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the prison doors was open. The keeper of the prisons thinking to him, oh, my God. The king is going to have my head. They're out. They said, do yourself no harm. We're all here. You know what happened? By them keeping their focus on God, not on their circumstances, with a thankful heart, here is what happened. The keeper of the prison saw something in them. And I can just imagine, he said, now wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. First of all, they're all beaten up and in chains and they are singing praises and Giving glory to God, their God. I, I don't know that. I don't know their God. Then when they have a chance to escape, they are still here. I want to know your God. That was an opportunity because of how they handled their situation, what they did right in the midst of the trouble and the trials and being beaten up. The world innkeeper got a chance to see the true and living God. And he got saved. Not only did he get saved, but his whole household got saved. See, that's what can happen when you keep your focus on him and not on your circumstances and you have an attitude of gratitude and thank you. That's what we're talking about here today. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thankful. He said, give thanks in everything. And there is power in being thankful. That's the content of what it means to give thanks in everything. And then there's the concern regarding giving thanks. In other words, why should I do it? Why is it important to give thanks? What is the benefit of me giving thanks? How am I going to be better off? Paul tells you, he says, this is the will of God concerning you. Why? This is the will of God concerning you, that you give thanks in everything. See, when you are grumbling, you're outside of the will of God. We don't want to live outside of the will of God, do we? There are people who are professional grummers, 
grumblers. They grumble. Grumble by trade. The only difference, they don't get paid for it. <laughs> they grumble about everything. Grumble about the job, the home, the kids, and if whatever else is going on. They grumble about it. And that's unfortunate. They could only see one side, the negative side, everything that was going wrong. When grumbling, when you are grumbling, you're not in faith. You're going through situations, yes. But according to God's word, hallelujah, <laughs> he in it with the church. He is your deliverer. He is your keeper. He's your buckler. He's your shield. As they say, your wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is a God that will make a way when there is no way. So whatever you're going through, if you are grumbling, you're not in faith. Selah, pause. Think about it. When you're going through challenges and you can say thank you in the midst of, it's because you know something. What do you know? Turn to Romans 8.28. I mean, what is it that you know that allow you to say thank you? Yes. To have a grateful heart mm. right in the midst of all hell break loose in your life. What do you know? What is it that you know? Romans 8.28. Give you a minute to get there. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It says, and we know, and we know. In other words, folks who are going through something can thank God in the midst of why? Because of what they know. Folks who are grumbling have lost sight. They don't know what you know. But folks who know what's in this verse, Romans 8 and 28, even in the midst of the challenges, the confusion, the distractions, the misery, even in the midst of not hearing God answer their prayers and it seems as if God is not listening, they know something. What do they know? They know that God is in control. Nothing escapes him. What do you know? Do you know that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose? Do you know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, yes. but God will deliver you out of them all? That's when you can have a thankful heart. That's when you can say thank you right in the midst of. So what do you know? When things are coming against you on every side, what do you know? You know that no weapon formed against you will prosper? Right. Hallelujah. And the list goes on and on and on. When you know something, you can give thanks right in the midst of. See, many times when you're going through, you have to trust God and stand on Romans 8 and 28 and believe by faith that all things are working together for your good. I'm reminded of Joseph. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. He was lied on and went into prison, and he was forgotten. How did Joseph maintain 
I believe if Joseph was here today and we asked Joseph, how did you go through this, Joseph, with the right attitude that you had? Because it said that God was with Joseph. In everything, God was with Joseph. He had the right attitude of heart. I believe Joseph would tell us, he said, you know, at the time that I was going through, I didn't know. I didn't know that God allowed me to be sold into slavery by my brothers and then end up in prison in prison and forgotten for a long time, and then released out of prison. I didn't know that God was setting me up. God was teaching me something. God was growing me. God was preparing me so that when the famine came down in Egypt, that I would be promoted. I would be the number one man under the king in command of the feeding program, and I could feed my family. I didn't know it when it was going on, but now I know. So that means that even though you don't know up front, what do you know? All things are working together for the good of those that love the Lord. That's what you stand on, and that can cause you to continually give thanks to God in the midst of it. Jesus is our greatest example of giving thanks. I'm reminded of when Jesus had taught all day long and there were 5,000 men and the women and the children. And as the day was coming to a close, everybody was hungry. They needed food. And the disciples came to Jesus and they said, send them all home. There's no food. Send them home. There's no McDonald's across the street, no Burger King. Send them home. They can't go to Popeye Chicken. There's none down there. By the way, Popeye Chicken, McDonald's, you all can send your donations in. Watch the screen. That's your plug. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. They couldn't do that. Jesus said, sit them down. And he asked what, did they, what was among them. They said, there's one little lad that brought a lunch. He had two little fish and five barley loaves of bread. Everyday language, he had two sardines and five crackers. What is that? To feed 5,000 men, the women, and the children. Jesus, we've got to be looking at around 20,000, what, 5,000, 20,000 people. What is that? Jesus said, bring it to me. Sit them all down. You're going to see faith in action. What did Jesus know? He knew God. He knew what God could do. And it said Jesus gave thanks. Hallelujah. You're looking at the power of thanksgiving now. You're looking at the power of giving thanks. It said that Jesus gave thanks and he prayed. And in my sanctified mind, I could just imagine that Jesus said, Lord, I thank you for the two little fish and the five loaves of bread. Lord, I thank you that you're the God of multiplication. Who glory be to God. And I thank you, Lord, that through your power, that all will be fed and satisfied. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I thank you for what I do have. In Jesus' name, amen. And it said Moby Dick showed up. (laughs) Glory be to God. Hallelujah. More than enough showed up. And not only were they able to feed the 5,000 men and the women and the children, but they had 12 baskets left over. See, the lesson that was being taught here that we all get a hold of Give thanks for what you have so that you can see God take a little and do a lot. That's the power of giving thanks. Give thanks for what you do have and watch God move and increase and multiply the little that you have and it'll become more than enough. Hallelujah. That's a reason to thank God. That's a reason, church, to be thankful today. We're in a season of thanksgiving. Let's not focus on what we don't have. 
Don't focus on what you can't do. Don't focus on woulda, coulda, shoulda. Focus on what God has given you and be thankful for it and watch God. Watch him multiply. Watch him move in your life. Be thankful this Thanksgiving. As you celebrate with your family and your friends, be thankful. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your children, your husband, your wife, your in-laws, your extended family. Be thankful for what God has given you. Do you know there's a lot of people that would love to be wearing your shoes today? And you complaining? A lot of people would love to have what you have. How many of you drove here or you walked? How many of you had lights that you could turn on? How many of you have heat in the wintertime and air conditioning in the summer? You know, I got a true revelation <laughs> this past summer on air conditioning because mine went out. I get up every day. If it's warm outside, I turn my air conditioner on. I mean, I don't give any thought to it. But I tell you what, when it went out, you might have been standing outside of my door, but you was going to hear me say, Lord, I need my air. Lord, this is too much heat. Lord, I'm serving you because I can't go to hell. I can't stand the heat. God, I need some air in Jesus' name. I need you to move supernaturally on my behalf. Lord, I thank you that I've had air all these years, and God, I need some right about now, and I thank you. Hallelujah. I got air. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. I got air. Enjoying it. This is what I'm talking about. The blessings are so numerous that we take them for granted. Let's be thankful. Let's praise God. Let's honor God. Let's be grateful for what we have and watch God multiply. And I want to say to you, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Whatever it is that you have, enjoy it. And be thankful for that and watch God work and increase what you have. And enjoy it. Put a smile on your face. Enjoy your day. God has given you this day. We don't need to grumble. We don't need to complain. We don't need to walk around sad, oppressed, depressed. We serve a God of the universe, the almighty God, the creator and maker of all things. We should be grateful. We should be thankful. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Walk around with your chest stuck out and your head in the air and let everybody know that I'm a prized possession. I belong to Almighty God. I'm a masterpiece. Hallelujah. I belong to God. You know what you're looking at when you look at me? You're looking at the creme de la creme of the crop. Hallelujah. Same thing I say about me, you say it about you because that's who you are. God defined you in his word. He said you are above only and never beneath. Stand on the promises of God and enjoy your day. Enjoy your thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Do you receive it? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. We never want to close our service without giving you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you have not made that commitment, and it's a personal commitment, I want you to give me your undivided attention. Whatever you're doing, I want you to stop. And I want you to pray the sinner's prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus died for me, rose on the third day, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for me. Come into my heart, save me now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Those words that you just spoke out of your mouth, if you believe them in your heart, you are now saved. And I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. I want to invite you out to share your testimony with us. 
and we promise to love you and teach you God's word. God bless you. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand?